Hey, what's up? It's Comic95, the savior. For this video, I'm going to give you guys 25 tips for university students here in Japan. You can also read um, all of the tips on this video on my blog. The link will be down in the description box below. So let's get started. Tip number one. I would highly suggest that you take your most difficult classes in the daytime so that this way you will end your day with your most fun classes. The reason being is if you take your harder classes in the daytime, your teacher, your professor will be in a better mood. Um, your classmates, you know, there won't be so many of them, you'll have a smaller class, so it's okay to make mistakes, it won't be as embarrassing because you're dealing with a much smaller group. Also, this allows you to get more, you know, help. You'll be more comfortable with asking your teacher for help, your teacher will be in a better mood when it comes to actually helping you, and you have more time to get it done without feeling tired, you know, in the middle of the day. So for example, if you have a really hard assignment from your most difficult math class or something, you can spend that afternoon, you know, getting tutoring at school, or you can even stay after class and have your teacher help you. If you take a difficult class in the evening, your teacher wants to go home, doesn't want to stay late, and you are probably tired yourself. So in my opinion, I say it's best to take your hardest classes in the daytime and your easiest ones in the evening. Once again, this also gives you the opportunity to make friends with your classmates as well. And what better you know, place to make friends than in your most difficult classes? This way they can also help you out should you miss class or you don't understand something and maybe they do, etc. So just my own two cents, but I would highly suggest doing so. Number two, similar to number one, I highly suggest that you try to take as many of your classes in the morning as possible. If you take all of your classes in the daytime, you will have more time in the evening to party, date, and or, you know, work. So that this way you can make money and help support yourself here. Versus if you have all your classes in the evening, most jobs that are part-time really don't need help in the daytime because they're not as busy versus, you know, needing help with cafes and restaurants, etc. in the evening when salarymen get off of work and everyone's out of school. So consider trying to push all of your classes in the morning if possible instead of having so many of them in the evening or late afternoon. This also gives you time to study and do your homework before you start feeling tired and this way you don't have to, you know, miss out on the partying and fun and social life, etc. You can have balance. You can, you know, work in the evening, you can, you know, hang out with your friends in the afternoon, and you have school first thing in the morning. Makes everything simple. Tip number three. If possible, try to have either your Fridays and or Mondays off. I would highly suggest Friday more so, and if possible, if or if not possible, try to have all of your classes wrapped up by about 1 to 2 p.m. This way you pretty much have a three-day weekend every weekend. Gives you extra time to have fun, study, work on projects, etc. or get help as needed. You want to try to give yourself as much free time as possible. Remember, you really have to try to, you know, support yourself here and make sure that you have a balance with your life. You don't want it to all be work, 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 study, 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 study. You want to be able to do fun stuff too. It's good to have a break and be able to relax with that three-day weekend so that this way you're not tempted to skip class during the week because you've already had your little three-day vacation. Give yourself a break and if possible try to cram your classes in the weekdays and give yourself a three-day weekend every week by having no classes on Friday or very few only in the daytime. Number four, consider joining your school's work-study program. This way you can get paid by working on campus which you can use that money to go towards your tuition as well as help cover your own personal expenses such as your rent and transportation. By joining the work-study program you will also instantly make friends with people at your school because you will be working either in the cafe, um, the computer lab, or the library which are all places that everyone on campus uses or at least sits around. It's an instant friend magnet. You will be forced to interact with other people and they will be forced to talk to and interact with you. If you're shy, it's a great way to put yourself out there because people are going to see, oh, we have a new cute barista, or hey, who's that handsome man at the computer? So yeah, don't be afraid to join um, the work-study program. It's, you know, helps you both financially and I guess emotionally, I should say, because you need friends in order to survive here in Japan. You don't want to be lonely and you don't want to be broke. Tip number five. This might actually go into tip number four, depending on the school that you are at, but consider actually tutoring students at your school and getting paid for it. So a lot of schools actually offer a program where if you have at least a B average or higher, you can tutor students in specific subjects that people tend to struggle with, such as English, math, science, etc. Things like that, core subjects. 
So if you have a high enough grade and you've been here for about a semester or so, and you have a high enough grade in that particular subject, you can actually get paid to tutor other students on something that's probably easy for you, especially English if you are a native speaker. So consider taking that up. Tip number six, try to join at least two different clubs or more at your school. This way you will instantly make friends that also have similar interests and hobbies as you, and you'll also get to go to exclusive parties, events, etc. that only members of these clubs go to. It'll help you feel at home because like I said, you need to have friends, you need a social life here in Japan, and why would you want to be friends with people that don't have the same interests as you? Joining a club will definitely allow you to do that and you can also learn you know, a new hobby, skill, you have great pictures and videos to share on your Instagram feed as well as Facebook, and if you don't plan to stay here long term, you definitely want to get in on this because you're going to go back home without that many great memories if you don't join a club. Trust me, you will do so much stuff that you would have never imagined doing before you came here and you know went to Japan. You'll meet a lot of people at these clubs and whatnot. So for example, if you're into computers like how I am, you might want to consider joining a computer club. If you're into gaming like how I am, you should join the gaming club like how I also did. You'll learn about new games, you'll learn how to make your own computer, there's all types of crazy stuff. Again, different schools have different clubs and different semesters, there's different clubs. If you don't see a club that interests you, volunteer to you know start one, get some signatures, don't be shy. Tip number seven, always carry basic items with you such as your residence card, your passport, a spare IC card, and about 10 to 20 US dollars or in other words one to two thousand yen on you at all times. If possible I would also recommend having a backup charger and pocket Wi-Fi as well as other miscellaneous small things like pen and paper that you might need and of course you always want to have your address written down. So you want to have it written preferably both in Japanese and English should you ever get lost and your phone battery dies. This is a bit paranoia but trust me I've been there done that and I wish I did have it written down. I've had moments where having my address written down in Japanese actually saved my life because I had no way of getting home. I didn't know where I was. I've also been lost without a phone or my address written down and that was a total nightmare. So do not make that mistake. Make sure that you have basic stuff with you. The last thing you want is to not have any money on you, lose your IC card, and pretty much be stranded at the train station and try to play charades to explain why you aren't able to get back home, but that you need to get on the train and try to give the conductor a train in your sob story. Don't do that. Always be prepared. And remember, it's technically illegal to be around here without your passport and or residence card. You're supposed to have it on you at all times. Having spare money can also help you in the event that you need to take a taxi home, such as when the last train has left, or if you're in a dangerous situation, you always want to have your identification and spare change with you. You never know what's going to happen. Check out my blog for the full list of items that I recommend that you carry in your backpack to save time. We will not go over it in this video. But again, carry your basics and some extra money and a spare charger, and of course, a fully charged phone with a charger. You never know what you're going to need or when you will need it. So yeah, future proof. Tip number eight. Try to make an effort to study some Japanese every single day. There's so many free apps and websites that you can use to do this. And if you don't have the time or you don't feel like this really helps you with studying, consider actually signing up for free tutoring. Yes, that's right, free tutoring at your school. Most schools offer free tutoring in which the students that are teaching you get paid, but you don't have to pay anything. It's a free complimentary service that your school offers. This way, beyond just trying to get a good grade in your Japanese class, you'll help yourself for real world interactions with dealing with Japanese people. You do not want to slack off on your Japanese. If you're going to school here, even if it's an entirely Japanese university, or if it's a school that has mostly foreigners, doesn't matter. You will spend most of your time speaking English because the Japanese students are going to want to practice English with you. Do not get stuck inside the Gaijin bubble. Don't get stuck with just speaking English. Improve your Japanese. Use apps. Set aside time every single day to study and immerse yourself in Japanese. Being in Japan is not enough when everyone and everything around you is written in English and being spoken to you in English. Make time to study Japanese. Tip number nine. While every school is of course very much indeed different, you should definitely consider taking some classes that are both fun, interesting, as well as useful for either your degree or helping you in the real world. I personally recommend taking a computer technology class, taking Japan history or US Japan history, depending on what school you're going to, a class on race, ethnicity, and gender, um, any type of English or composition type class as well. These are really great and fun classes to take 
and you can obviously use them to earn credits uh, towards your degree. Some of them are, you know, I forgot the word to use for class that you don't have to take. You know what I mean? I can't think of the word. Anyway, <laughs> you don't have to necessarily take something like computers and whatnot. An elective is what I'm looking for. But again, it's a fun class to take. It teaches you a lot. You'll learn a lot and it can be useful even outside of school and it also is helpful for whatever major you might have such as business or education whatever you might be going to school for so just because you're in college in japan does not mean all of your classes have to be super boring i'm personally not normally a fan of history but i took such a great japanese history class that history actually became my favorite subject i was looking forward to that class every week and i absolutely loved tuesdays and thursdays because of that class alone and i had so many notes i actually still have that notebook to this video day and I can't wait until next semester because I'm gonna be taking another Japanese history class again oh and excuse me before I forget the fifth class that you definitely need to take obviously you should be signing up for Japanese don't live in Japan and not take a Japanese class I don't care if you've passed the N1 take it again <laughs> you definitely need to study Japanese you're never going to have enough Japanese skill you can always learn more the more you use it the more you study it etc the more you know the better you'll speak the better you'll be able to read and write there's always room for growth and improvement make sure that you are definitely taking a Japanese class of nothing else if you can only take two classes off of this list I highly recommend you take Japanese history as well as Japanese language you'll love both classes they are hard they are very fast-paced you cannot slack especially in the Japanese language class but it is definitely worth it very useful whether it goes against your degree or not you can use it both in Japan as well as outside of Japan and it might even help you with your specific major so yeah definitely take that class number 10 try to attend as many school events as possible so there might be things like barbecues picnics speech day etc make sure that you're there for the thanksgiving christmas parties halloween parties etc not only will you get to know people but again makes great pictures great videos you'll have a good time you can share them add them to you you know add those pictures and videos to your photo albums and you know whatever type of stuff you have going on i forgot the name but scrapbook <laughs> if you scrapbook like how i do you'll have plenty of pictures to add to that i highly recommend that you go again you'll enjoy your time here meet new people do fun stuff try to attend as many events as possible you don't have to go with someone but you most certainly can go with a group of people as well get to know people at your school through other clubs and ask them to you know tag along with you you can bring your boyfriend or girlfriend that doesn't even attend your school it's okay too there might be a small price for some of these clubs and some of these events but it's not going to be too expensive they'll never exceed about twenty dollars and that's the max Normally these events are either free or they're ten dollars or less. So it's nothing, you know, too hefty where you can't afford it. And if for any reason you can't afford the little amount that it costs, talk to some of the staff there and trust me, they'll let you go for free. Number 11, make sure you're taking notes in class. You'll remember things better if you're actually physically writing them down and not just recording them. If for any reason you cannot get notes on something, you don't have enough time, at least use your you know, smartphone, tablet, whatever, to take a picture of it and or record you know, the board or whatever. Your professor would normally be okay with it. Most colleges allow you to use your cell phone and computer in Japan just like how you can in America. But again, it depends on the school, so make sure it's okay to do so. But anyway, like I said, it's best for you to write down your notes so that you'll remember it better especially when it comes to Japanese class or history it is so much better to physically write than it is to type your notes or to record them your brain will retain the information better if you're physically writing it versus you recording it or just taking a picture of it that you're probably never going to go back to and this way everything's inside of one place just inside of your notebook versus you having some things in your notebook some things on your computer and some things on your cell phone Try to stay as organized as possible. Take your own notes. Don't rely on your friends because if they don't take good notes, you'll be stuck with trying to use whatever garbage crap they did or did not write. Look out for yourself. Tip number 12, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you are too shy to ask for help during class, be sure to talk to your teacher as soon as class is over and or email them and set up an appointment so that you guys can meet together and receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring from your teacher. They have to do this whether they like it or not, they're being paid for it. So if you don't take advantage of the free tutoring that your teacher can give you, not just other students, but the teachers, you are basically paying them to do nothing. They're getting paid whether they actually teach you or not. They're still gonna be sitting there inside their office at their desk doing absolutely nothing. So take advantage of that free help. Also consider sitting, consider sitting, 
closest to whatever your teacher's desk is. So if it's at the front of the class or the back, doesn't matter. Your professor will see you as being more studious if you're sitting close to their desk. You might be afraid of them calling on you more, but more than likely they're not gonna call on you more. And this way, as soon as they're done talking, you know, lecturing you, you can quietly come up to them or even sit at your desk and be like, hey, professor, I need help. Versus being all the way in the back and having to walk all the way to the front, everyone looking at you and it being really embarrassing and whatnot. Not to mention, this is college and most college professors do not act like how things were in junior high and or high school. It's mostly lecturing, they're not trying to embarrass you, they want you to pass. Professors here, in my opinion, are, not, are a lot nicer than the ones in the US, so do not be afraid to ask for help. Remember, you're paying for these classes and you're paying a lot more for them simply because they're in Japan. Do not fail these classes. It's just money down the drain and you cannot afford to do that. Trust me. Tip number 13. Pretty similar to tip number 12, try to get to know your professors. So again, if you get to know them, they'll see you as being studious. If you need extra credit, you have a bad grade, they'll be willing to write that off, give you extra credit, do whatever it takes to make you make sure that you pass. If you don't get to know your professor, you make no effort to talk to them, you don't schedule appointments with them, you just allow yourself to fail or whatever. When it does come time for the grades to come out and you're just a little smidget away from passing, they're not gonna let you pass because you made no effort to try to bring that grade up or do anything about it. I've personally been guilty of doing this. Do not make my mistake. Trust me, if you need help, go and ask now. Do not wait until you've already failed your you know, midterms and your finals, etc. Get the help that you need now. Get to know your professor now. You will earn yourself brownie points that you can cash in sooner than you would ever expect that you'll need them because trust me you can go from being you know really good in the class and then suddenly you guys go over something new and your grade just slips tremendously do not make that mistake number 14 try to talk to as many people as you can at your school so whenever you see someone speak to them ask them where they're from how long they've been there ask them you know how long they've been in japan how do they like the school what classes do they have etc make small talks how you make friends if you're always the fly on the wall you try to avoid conversation you seem really boring you never make an effort to talk to people then you're probably not going to have many friends you have to be a friend to make a friend you know how the whole saying goes i know what it's like i'm personally extremely shy i have extreme anxiety i have suicide depression trust me <laughs> I know how bad and how hard it is but again the only person that can save you is ultimately you you have to make an effort to make friends the best way to do that is to make small talk you're in an easy country to do that too because you're already a foreigner and more than likely they're not or they are whichever it is they probably come from a different country than you even if they're Japanese they might not actually be from whatever city you're studying in so maybe you're in Tokyo but that student was actually born and raised in Osaka so think of it that way easy way to start conversation they'll be happy that you spoke to them first just like how you would be happy when people speak to you first so again you know take the initiative to speak to people when you see them the worst that can happen is they give you a short answer they don't talk to you again but more than likely they will continue to greet you every time they see you it'll make you feel good give you a reason to live and it'll help you feel better about being here in Japan again you meet friends but you have to make an effort to actually make them. They're not always going to come to you. Tip number 15, make sure you bring your passport and your residence card and student ID so that you can use your student discount. A lot of retail stores here, as well as you know tourist places like museums, etc., they actually offer discounts for students. You can only get these discounts if you have your student visa and or your student ID with you. So be sure to always carry both. Some places will be nice, like I've personally gotten discounts just by saying that I'm a student, but other places won't and they will you know, require that you show that to them beyond just a student discount with your passport especially if you're just in Japan for one semester you can actually get you know you can be tax exempt or, or whatever you want to call it you don't have to pay taxes at a lot of places if you are just here for a semester so keep that in mind tip number 16 try to see if you can find the ebook for whatever books you need for class as well as see if you can buy one from a student that no longer needs that book before you purchase a brand new book from your school. Most schools here in Japan, depending on where you go, I would say a lot of schools here actually don't have any used books inside of their bookstore necessarily, so you will more than likely have to buy the books brand new. So make sure that you ask around and see what friends you have or, you know, associates, whatever, if somebody's selling a book that they no longer need, you can get it, you know, for a much cheaper price or even try to buy one 
or illegally download it online and that will save you a lot of money. Your books will add up very fast, paying anywhere from $50, $200-$300 for individual books will become very expensive. Try to save money, try to get them for cheaper from your friends and classmates or download them online or pay for the ebook version of it. This way you also don't have to carry as much stuff to class you can get the digital copy of it, just bring your laptop. And if nothing else, you don't have to spend so much money on the book. If you get it from your friend, you can get the book for like $20, $30, even though it really costs like $50, $100, however many dollars. So yeah, ask around, don't be shy. Tip number 17, make sure that you have work-life balance, or shall I say school-life balance. You don't want to spend all of your time, as I've said before, just studying, just doing homework. You have to make sure that you have time to eat, have time to have fun, have time to date, hang out with friends, and you know, even do your homework, etc. You don't want to just be at school, you don't want to just be studying. So try to have like cutoff times. Maybe you make sure that you know you're done with your homework by 7:30, you're in bed by 10:30 or whatever. Give yourself a break. You have to make sure there's balance and take care of your mental health. If you're always busy doing work, whether it's physical work at your job to make ends meet, or if you're always at school, whatever the case is, you will become depressed, you will want to go home, and that's not gonna be really pretty for you or anyone else. So make sure you take care of yourself here in Japan. Don't be afraid to, you know, tell people like, hey, like, you know, I need help, I'm not feeling well, I need time off from school. Don't be afraid to take a day off. Don't be afraid to speak with a counselor. Do what you have to do. Take care of yourself. Look out for yourself. And once again, have balance. You don't want too much work, but you also shouldn't be playing around too much either. You have to take school seriously here. Okay, I'm just gonna do regular numbers from now on. So, number 18. You should definitely try your best to ask for help if you're having trouble with your finances. Don't be afraid to ask your financial aid advisor for a larger uh, student loan. Don't be afraid to contact Sally Mae. Do whatever you have to do to get more money if needed. If you find that you're struggling here, you don't have enough money, etc., try to get an increase in as much you know, free money as possible and then from there take out a loan if necessary. Let your school know that you're struggling. They can find you a job that can actually coincide with your schedule. They can find work for you around the school that you can get paid for. They can, you know, loan you money. There's all types of stuff they can do on your behalf for you, but you have to speak up and let them know. And you have to be a good student. You cannot be here slipping with your grades and then expect for them to help you out financially. I've been there, done that. Again, do not be like me. Don't make dumb mistakes. Try to take care of, you know, your own issues and tackle them as soon as they become a problem. So the moment that you realize, hey, I think I'm gonna have trouble with money, let someone know, speak up. Do not wait until the last moment. And again, you know, if your grades are an issue, you probably are going to want to bring that up before you, you know, bring up your grades before you start asking around for money if you want to be taken seriously. Again, don't be afraid to ask for financial help. Even your friends and classmates can possibly loan you money. But this is why it's important to build good relationships with both your teachers, um, you know, the faculty and staff at your school, as well as your classmates. Number 19. If you're getting invited to an event, even if it's not necessarily a cup of tea, go ahead, take the risk and chance, and go anyway. You'll have great pictures, great videos, it's a different and brand new experience, and if nothing else, you probably made some new friends, and again, you just got some new pictures, got to try new food, etc. Don't be afraid to do things that you don't necessarily think that you will like and or love. You never know, you might discover that you have interest in things you never really thought of. Take a risk, take a chance, go ahead, go on that crazy field trip, go to that, you know, bookstore even though you hate books, go, you know, watch them build the computer even though you don't care about, you know, building computers and nerdy stuff like that. Go to these events, don't be shy, accept any invites that you get as long as it's legal. Tip number 20. Do not fall for the trap, do your homework now. <laughs> I promise you that one to two week deadline will slip up on you, it'll come up, creep up out of nowhere so fast. You might think, oh, I have the whole semester to work on, you know, my final assignment, whatever. No, that two month, you know, whatever time period is gonna go by so fast. Do not make that mistake. Do your homework now. Your sex life, your dating, gaming, etc. it can all wait. You're not in Japan to be a gamer. You're not in Japan to, you know, be a cosplayer, to date Japanese people, that's not what you're here for. For. That might be why you want to be here, but you're only here because you're here on a student visa. So you need to make sure that your studies come first. If they slip and fall apart, you can get expelled, kicked out of school, lose your visa, etc. You don't want that to happen. Make sure you take your homework seriously so that your grades do not fall behind and you don't risk getting kicked out of your school. 
tip number 20, oh my gosh, <laughs> tip number 21. Try to arrive to all your classes 10 to 15 minutes early. This way you don't have to worry about being late. If there aren't assigned seats, you can make sure you get the seat that you want. And you'll also get to socialize and get to know your classmates. If you're always the one coming in late, people are not gonna wanna be your friend. You're going to look bad in your teacher's eyes and even your classmates. Also keep in mind that if you come to class early once again, not only will it be great for socializing with other people, again, you know, your teacher is gonna notice this. So when you do need help, you'll be seen as someone that's studious, but also consider staying 10 to 15 minutes afterwards as well. If you always just show up to class right on time and leave right on time, you're never gonna make friends because it's very unlikely people are gonna stop you in your tracks to try to befriend you if you're never anywhere to be found. You always seem like you're in a rush. You always seem like you have somewhere to go. Hang out around the school. You don't have to just go to class. Just stay there for a few minutes. Hang out and you know talk to people. Sit in the lounge area. Stay in the bathroom for a moment longer and fix your hair in the mirror. Compliment the other girl on her makeup. Do something like that. Don't be afraid to hang out around class. Tip number 22, consider purchasing a pocket Wi-Fi device. So even if you have unlimited data, like how I personally do on my international plan, I personally use T-Mobile One when I first came here. I actually still have it and I have a Japanese phone. But before you get your Japanese phone, you're going to want to rely and maybe you'll still continue to use it like how I do. Um, an international phone plan, but I would also recommend having a pocket Wi-Fi. You can connect all of your devices, so your tablet, your computer, etc. in class. Remember, you will probably have trouble getting around in Japan when you first come here because you might not be able to speak, read, and write Japanese. And on top of that, there are no street names and addresses on most buildings, so it'll be very difficult to navigate without it. And should your phone die, you're pretty much going to be screwed. So it's nice to not only have a pocket Wi-Fi device, but a backup battery as well. Again, try to future-proof, think for yourself, you know, things you might need in the future. I'm not trying to make you paranoid, but again, just being real, I believe having pocket Wi-Fi saved my life several times, as well as having a spare battery because I could charge my devices when they did die when I was out and got lost. And my battery has not functioned before, my iPhone were to be on full battery and then just suddenly die. That is a total nightmare for someone that doesn't know their way around and that can't speak Japanese. And that was definitely me my first year here. Tip number 23, make sure you eat something before you go to class. You don't want your stomach to be growling in the middle of class and also make sure you go to the bathroom before class as well. You don't wanna to have to get up in the middle of class and use the restroom. Some teachers can be funny about that, but normally they don't care, but you will end up missing out on important information. So once more, you don't wanna be relying on other students to take notes for you. You want to be able to hear everything yourself. You never know, you might miss something important that's going to be in your midterms and or finals. Handle your business before class. If for any reason you don't have time to eat at home, most classrooms allow you to eat and drink inside of them, as long as it ain't nothing extreme and ghetto and whatnot. But make sure while you're eating and drinking that you're actually paying attention to what's going on as well in class. Of course, you can always go afterwards, but you know, it can be anywhere from one hour to two hours that you're sitting there. So try to handle eating, drinking, using the restroom before class. Even if you think you don't have to go, even if you think you're not that hungry, Make sure you have a little snack, a little bit of water with you, and make sure you go to the restroom first. Tip number 24. Even if you're not feeling well, even if you're running late, even if you're tired, your head hurts, you're sick, go to class any way. You do not want to be um, relying on other people. Go to class anyway. Do not allow, you know, whatever little problem that you're having at the moment to screw you over. You do not want to be relying on other people's notes and whatnot because if your classmates didn't take notes or the notes are bad or they're not willing to share with you or you don't have friends in that class, you're basically going to be relying on having to make an appointment with your teacher, which is going to take time out of your day to ask them what did you miss, um, what did you miss, what did you miss in class? And they may or may not even be able to fill you in on everything. And again, you don't want this to mess up, you know, your results on finals or midterms, etc. Try to go to class as much as possible. Even if you're feeling really, really sick, it's not gonna kill you to take two hours out of your day. All you have to do is just sit there. It's just a college class. You're not really doing much. You're just taking notes, sitting there, staring at the teacher. Of course, bring stuff that you need, like cough drops, wear a mask. Don't get your classmates sick. But unless you're like seriously sick and you just absolutely cannot move, if it's just a cold, you just have a sore throat, go to class anyway. Bring hand sanitizer, take your cough drops, take your tissues, don't get other people sick, but don't be a whiny brat about it. If you're running late, do you really think not going to class is going to help you? 
if anything, it's just going to make things even worse. Go to class anyway. Even if you're so late that you're going to be counted as absent anyway, still go to class. You also never know. Your teacher might actually write it off and not count that absence against you. So just take a chance. Go anyway. Put some effort in. It doesn't matter if there's just 20 minutes or 30 minutes left. Attend class anyway. Do not make excuses for not going to class. And last but not least, tip number 25. Make sure that you sign up for popular accounts that Japanese people use. So you should definitely have a LINE account, which is an app that people use to message each other and call. People here don't normally talk by email and or phone number. So if you don't have a LINE account, you are going to be a lame, you ain't finna have no friends, and you're gonna be an outcast. So you definitely need LINE. I also recommend that you download the apps Meet Me, I mean not Meet Me, Meet Up, and Facebook. The reason why you need these two is these are the apps where you can find a lot of international parties, language exchanges, as well as a lot of, you know, events going on in your area. So for example, I went to, you know, a Cuban festival and I forgot what else I've done. I've done a lot of like festivals and concerts and all type of stuff, Halloween parties, etc. that I've gone to from joining Facebook groups. You want to do the exact same thing. Now there aren't a lot of good Facebook groups that specifically like host parties, but what happens is someone has a party they share the event on Facebook and then everyone knows about it. There's no good group to join on Facebook. Most groups for Japan on Facebook are for foreigners that are basically weeboos or desperately looking for a Japanese spouse and you might be one of those people. I ain't finna judge you. So anyway, back on subject, make sure you have those apps. A lot of Japanese people here pretty much just use Instagram and Twitter. Not a lot of them have a Facebook. So this is not more so for making friends, but rather for you to, you know, be able to go to parties and do fun stuff while you are here. Remember, your studies should always come first. So if you're failing in class, you shouldn't be thinking about sex, dating, and partying. You should be trying to bring those grades up. You will and you can get kicked out of school. You don't want that to happen. So anyway, if you missed anything, you can recap everything on my blog. All of it is all written there for you already. Um, as well as I have other blogs on, you know, going to school in Japan. There's an entire playlist here on my channel um, that you can watch about studying in Japan. It gives advice. I will be making more videos in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any more advice you'd like to give for other university or language school students, please leave a comment down below. Or if you have a question, please leave a comment as well. You can also send me an email if there's something that I didn't mention here that you would like advice on, or if there's you no know, a video idea that you would like for me to do. Other than that, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I have a Snapchat as well. All of the links that you need are in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!